Boeing, you know, is a story that I've, I've been on for a while um, because it did catch my attention after the MAX crashes. And it was one of those things that kind of in our space, in the alternative media space, it just kind of slipped through the cracks because the fucking world is on fire and we're always chasing this and that and the other thing. And um, but the max crashes really exposed that Boeing was a very dangerous company. And there were whistleblowers then saying this is just the beginning and describing the practices that they saw in the factories and so on that were going to lead to inevitably more crashes. And while thankfully there haven't been any crashes yet, it's, it's, it's literally you're having multiple incidents with Boeing planes on a weekly basis now. And so that's just, true. Before you go to your exhibit, actually, Russell has been on this beat for a long time. In fact, the first article pitch you ever gave me, before we even knew each other that well, never mind co-hosting the show, the first article pitch he sent me for the blog was an article about the 737 MAX, the Boeing MAX. You've actually been on this beat for a while. So, okay, so here's a uh, hodgepodge of recent headlines. Uh, tire flies off United Boeing plane... <laughs> Shortly after takeoff, Boeing 737 MAX 8 ran off Texas runway into grassy area, says United Airlines. Now, not all of these say Boeing. United, I will not fly United now. You know why? They have the largest fleet of Boeing Maxes in the world. United flight returns to airport after engine catches fire shortly after takeoff. United Airlines reports fifth flight incident in a week as jet turns back due to maintenance issue. That that one, they never explained what it was. So um, I compiled a little footage where footage is available of some of these incidents. My apologies to those of you who are already nervous flyers. This is not going to uh, cure you of that condition, I assure you. Yeah, there you go. Imagine looking out the window of the plane you're on and seeing that. God. Yeah, so this, this 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 was March 4th. This was another one where the engine caught on fire again. And um, okay, so you got to watch that closely. I'm going to go back, watch yeah, the rewind. tire watch the tire fall off. The tire See fall that? off, yep. There goes the tire. There goes. It literally just happened. There are so many police here now. It's crazy. So these two cars, and they found some of the landing gear over there. They think it was a United 777. Yeah, so took out a few cars on the way when it hit, when it landed. Um, okay, so in the latest uh, terrifying incident, this is uh, yesterday. This is March 11th. At least 50 hurt as LATAM's Boeing 787 to Auckland just dropped mid-flight. At least 50 people were hurt when a Boeing 787 operated by LATAM Airlines dropped abruptly mid-flight from Sydney to Auckland on Monday, according to the airline and a New Zealand health service organization that treated the injured. The aircraft experienced a strong shake, and as a result, 10 passengers and three cabin crew members were taken to a hospital, the South African carrier said, as it investigates the cause. The flight with 263 passengers and nine cabin crew members landed at Auckland Airport as scheduled on Monday afternoon. One person is in serious condition, while the rest suffered mild to moderate injuries, a spokesperson for Hato Hone St. John which treated roughly 50 people at the airport, said. Quote, the plane unannounced just dropped. I mean, it dropped unlike anything I've ever experienced on any kind of minor turbulence, and people were thrown out of their seats, hit the top of the roof of the plane, throwing down the aisles, passenger Brian Jokat told the BBC. Okay, so we we have a uh, edited version of a CNN uh, interview with that passenger. So uh, let's take a look. I had dozed off and uh, luckily had my seatbelt engaged. And uh, uh, the next thing you know, the, the, the plane, as I've kind of un 
kind of learned to understand it dropped something to the effect of 500 feet instantly and then had the effect of uh, it coming like a roller coaster and then started to point down and that's when it, it and i opened my eyes and there was various individuals at the top of the plane <sighs> just stuck to the roof and then they fell to the floor oh my god so the pilot after this happens comes back to to check on everybody after uh, okay yeah we were talking about this before this now i i have flown i counted because i knew we were doing this tonight so i've taken 21 <laughs> flights in the last 12 months which i believe is more than i've taken in my entire life collectively in the last year and I've been flying enough that I can notice different kinds of flyers. You could tell the people who fly a lot as part of their job, because when you hit that normal turbulence that flights have all the time, they're the motherfuckers who are just sitting there on their laptop. Like they don't give a shit. Right, right, right. But even with 21 flights, I'm sorry, man. I'm I'm gripping those hand rests <laughs> when the plane starts doing that. I always like the window seat. So very often I'm watching the wing going up and down at those moments. Um, something like this, I can't even imagine. You got passengers ended up on the ceiling. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're lucky I, I, no one got killed. You could snap your neck if you hit it, the well, it's ceiling. Well, it's incredible that no one got killed. Yeah. Um, I think what I've thought about this because, you know, the statistic, it's it's more dangerous to drive in a car. And sure. I mean, how many people do you know who, uh, who have been in car accidents versus plane crashes? Right. Um, but I think it's because you have absolutely no control over what's going to happen to you. That, right. That's part of what's so scary about it. The, it's this plane that, goes down. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. And you're guaranteed not to make it like that's Yes, that is one part of it. The other part of it is that any minor defect with the plane can cause a crash, in which case you're done. Right. Right. There are like, so many little, little things, things there. Right. Like my father's friend says, you know, yeah, if, I, if I'm driving down the road and my engine overheats, I pull over. I'm fine. I'm on a plane. The engine overheats. I'm fucking dead. The the uh, he was he he was telling us a story about one time he was flying and he was nervous, like visibly nervous, like you know, trembling, breathing, you know, you know, fast and just visibly kind of disturbed. And one of the flight attendants comes over to him and says, "Sir, uh, what's what's wrong?" And he says, "What's wrong? Look where we are." <laughs> 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 what's wrong with 30,000 fucking feet in the air? That's what's wrong. We're not supposed to be here. Yeah. Well, and that does occur to me. I'm not so jaded that that does right. not occur to me sometimes in a flight. I'm not what you would call a nervous flyer. I think I would say I'm normal. Like yeah, most people like don't me, yeah. like that turbulent shit. I, I don't think most people are real comfortable when they start feeling that feeling of the plane yeah, dropping in the little, wind. Yeah, they get they on get it. Look, get that look, yeah. That's that's the level. I, I get a right. little nervous. Right. Uh, nothing crazy. But if this shit happened. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, fuck that. Oh, man. I, I, I would be. Ah! <laughs> yeah. So uh, so now listen to the what the captain told this guy is pretty scary in regards to the quality of these planes that Boeing is rolling off the assembly line. The incident so, comes over to where yeah, you are. Uh, Brian, how did he look? He was, I think he was in shock. Just, I think he felt that he wanted to see what, what people were going through. He walked to the back and I immediately engaged with him and said, you know, what was that? And he openly admitted he said i lost control of the plane my gauges just kind of went blank on me and that's when the plane just took a dive so and, literally uh, he, he says said, the gauges went blank yeah he said they they malfunctioned mm -hmm. and 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 did he did he say that made it so he didn't have the ability then to even control it to fly it he said, he said for that brief moment, he couldn't control anything. And that's when the, you know, the plane just did what it did. And then he said the gauges came back and then re-engaged and the plane just re-engaged to its normal flight pattern. Was it silent? So, so you get that? The plane just died in the middle of the flight and plunged. And then 
for whatever reason, it turned back on. I Maybe they hit the dashboard a few times. Yeah, like in Back <laughs> to the Future when he can't get to the he can't get to the wire and dies like fuck and then it turns <laughs> on. Yeah. Uh just wow. Wow. Okay, so now uh he describes what the what the 45 minutes remaining in the flight was like on that plane. What were those last 45 minutes like? There, there was there was there was long lines minutes. for the bathroom. That's Eerily what it was like. Silence for the ones that were okay. <laughs> And then a lot of you could hear people sobbing and a lot of people kind of in pain with, you know, kind of, yeah, just kind of hunched over and, and people shaking like there were their hands were shaking and it was, it was bizarre. Okay, so, um, so uh, just to, uh, just to. Uh, add to your comfort the next time you get on a plane that's not an Airbus. Uh, FAA audit of Boeing 737 MAX production found dozens of issues. The company failed 33 of 89 audits during an examination conducted by the FAA after a panel blew off an Alaska Airlines jet in January. I didn't even bother including that because I'm assuming most of you heard about that. Um, a six-week audit by the FAA of Boeing's production of the 737 MAX jet found dozens of problems throughout the manufacturing process at the plane maker and one of its key suppliers, according to a slide presentation reviewed by the New York Times. The air safety regulator initiated the examination after a door panel blew off a 737 MAX 9 during an Alaska Airlines flight in early January. Last week, the agency announced that the audit had found multiple instances in which Boeing and the supplier Spirit Aerosystems failed to comply with quality control requirements, though it did not provide specifics about the findings. For the portion of the examination focused on Boeing, the FAA conducted 89 product audits, a type of review that looks at aspects of the production process. The plane maker passed 56 of the audits and failed 33 of them, with a total of 97 instances of alleged non-compliance, according to the presentation. The FAA also conducted 13 product audits for the part of the inquiry that focused on Spirit Aerosystems, which makes the fuselage or body of the 737 MAX. Six of those audits resulted in passing grades, and seven resulted in failing ones, the presentation said. That's exactly what you want to hear about the people making the fuselage of the plane, failing more than half the time. Wow. Um, this is my favorite part of this entire article. Get ready. At one, really, you're never going to want to get on a plane again. At one point during the examination, the air safety agency observed mechanics at Spirit using a hotel key card to check a door seal, according to a document that describes some of the findings. That action was quote, not identified, documented, called out in the production order, the document said. Wait, it gets better. In another instance, the FAA saw spirit mechanics apply liquid dawn soap <laughs> oh to God. a door seal as lubricant in the fit-up process, according to the document. The door seal was then cleaned with a wet cheesecloth, the document said, noting that instructions were, quote, vague and unclear on what specifications actions are to be followed or recorded by the mechanic. Now, I just want to pause here for a moment, because if you are old enough to remember the height of the Cold War, um, the 80s, the kind of part two of the height of the Cold War, first one being the 50s, and we kind of with Reagan coming in, it all ramped up again. A big, a very common joke about the Soviets was the idea that they would do shit like that. Oh, right. don't worry, comrade, a little spit. You punch <laughs> a couple times, it will work. We were told that's what communism does, right? right? Communism leads to all of these shortages and poor quality workers right. who don't cutting really corners, care, right. and they're cutting corners, and they're going to 
put dangerous technology out there that can only be held together with spit and bailing wire. We were told communism was going to do that. Well, looks like capitalism in its late stages uh, actually is where you end up in a, in a place where you have completely incompetent workers using fucking dish soap to, to assemble a plane. Dish soap. Dish soap. Okay. So, asked about the appropriateness of using a hotel key card or Dawn soap in those situations. Dawn soap, uh, not just dish soap. Dawn soap. Dawn Couldn't soap. even spring for the nature's promise. They, they or or the palm olive. At least get the, the palm, palm olive. olive. The palm olive. That's right. A spokesman for Spirit, Joe Buccino, said the company was reviewing all identified nonconformities for corrective action. One audited Spirit that focused on the door plug component found five problems. One of those problems, the presentation said, was that Boeing, quote, failed to provide evidence of approval of minor design change under a method acceptable to the FAA, unquote. It was not clear from the presentation what the design change was. Another audit dealt with the installation of the door plug, and it was among those that Spirit failed. Okay, now, now listen to this, because they use a very fancy, very uh, newspeak way of basically saying the workers don't know what the fuck they're doing. And there are no standards applied to who gets hired to do this. Um, the audit raised concerns about the spirit technicians who carried out the work and found that the company, quote, failed to determine the knowledge necessary for the operation of its processes. You get that? Basically, the company has no standards and just hired whoever the fuck walked in the door who would do this job at the low wages they're getting paid. Right. Um, other audits that spirit failed included one that involved a cargo door and another that dealt with the installation of cockpit windows. Okay. So finally to close out this portion of the scaring the shit out of our audience, uh, part of the show, uh, this clip has been floating around from Al Jazeera. It's part of a longer investigation. One of the employees at Boeing became whistleblower and went undercover with his own hidden camera and talked to his coworkers about whether they would fly on these planes and what's actually going on in these assembly plants. And it's pretty terrifying. This is a Boeing factory in the U S state of South Carolina. Workers here in Charleston are assembling the company's flagship product, the 787 Dreamliner. But this footage reveals some have little faith in the plane they build. Did you fly on one? Uh, no. You won't fly on one. Did you fly on one of these planes? Of 15 workers asked randomly, 10 said they would not fly on the Dreamliner. I wouldn't fly on one of these planes because I see the quality of the An employee captured the footage after contacting Al Jazeera to tell us he had serious concerns about what he was seeing. At his request, we changed his voice. With all the problems reported on the 787, there's 90% that's getting swept away, hushed up. It's an iceberg. In another meeting, the source told us workers are often underskilled, uncaring, and in some cases on drugs. I've seen a lot of things that should not go on at an airplane plant. People talking about doing drugs, looking for drugs. It's all coke and uh, painkillers and a third one. They get weed here. It's a really good weed here. They don't drug test nobody. I know they don't. Yeah, there's people who go out there and watch go smoke more than Do they? Hell yeah. Over the course of a year, Al Jazeera's investigative unit um, hey, you know, I, I don't want to say it. Hey, I'm, I'm flying a lot myself. I'm going back out to uh, L.A. next month. So, you know, it's not like I have no skin in the game. Eventually, you know, a plane gauge is going to cut out and not come back on or a of door. Course, panel it's Russian is, sure. It, when you're having problems like this multiple times a week, it's a miracle. None of these planes have crashed yet. 
It's incredible that none of these have led to a crash. But when you've got these kinds of endemic problems, which were warned about years ago, all of these whistleblowers were cut like the one we're about to cover have been talking about this for years since those maxes crashed. They've been coming out and saying, hey, the processes in these factories are not safe. The way these planes are being built is not safe. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. And because the bar to entry in manufacturing consumer aircraft is so high, we're fucked because you got Airbus and you got Boeing. Northrop Grumman, I don't think they even do passenger planes. I think they just do military contracting. So what do you do now right. when one of the two manufacturers of passenger planes has been so corrupted by the incentives of capitalism and chasing Wall Street uh, approval that they can no longer be trusted to build planes? What are they going to do? Are they going to take all these planes out of service that they've built over the last 10 years under this regime it's it's a very bad situation and right now it's like well that sounds crazy well what about when two or three of these fall out of the sky they're gonna have to and then that what's that gonna do to air travel this, yeah. is, this is a very serious situation obviously yeah obviously and uh the kind of indictment of capitalism that you know uh you said it was years ago but uh i do want to Bring attention to this totally non-suspicious development. Boeing whistleblower John Barnett found dead in the United States. This is from the BBC. Now, the BBC is an esteemed publication, but apparently the concept of paragraphs uh, is not something they embrace there. I don't know why each sentence needs its own paragraph, but this is the way it's published in the paper. They, have, they don't know how to join sentences together to form a paragraph. It was a pain in the <laughs> ass to format this. Seriously, every sentence is its own this space. So I don't know why. I never heard of that. Anyway, a former Boeing employee known for raising concerns about the firm's production standards has been found dead in the United States. John Barnett worked for Boeing for more than 30 years before retiring in 2017. In the days before his death, he had been giving evidence in a whistleblower lawsuit against the company. Hmm. Boeing said it was saddened to hear of Mr. Barnett's passing. I'm sure they were. The Charleston County coroner confirmed his death <laughs> yeah. to the BBC on Monday. It said oh, 62... you mean he's not going to get to testify on he's Saturday? He's not going to get to testify again? Gosh darn it. We were really curious about what he had to say. Yeah, we had a gift basket for him and everything. It said the 62-year-old had died from a, quote, self-inflicted wound on March 9th, and police were investigating. Mr. Barnett had worked for the U.S. plane giant for more than 30 years until his retirement in 2017 on health grounds. From 2010, he worked as a quality manager at the North Charleston plant, making the 787 Dreamliner, a state-of-the-art airliner used mainly on long-haul long routes. Pardon me. In 2019, Mr. Barnett told the BBC that under-pressure workers had been deliberately fitting substandard parts to aircraft on the production line. He also said he had uncovered serious problems with oxygen systems, which could mean one in four breathing masks would not work in an emergency. One in four. That's quite a few. He yes. said soon after starting work in South Carolina, he had become concerned that the push to get new aircraft built meant the assembly process was rushed and safety was compromised, something the company denied. He later told the BBC that workers had failed to follow procedures intended to track components through the factory, allowing defective components to go missing. He said in some cases, substandard parts had, been, had even been removed from scrap bins and fitted to planes that were being built to prevent delays on the production line. He also claimed that tests on emergency oxygen systems due to be fitted on the seven, to the 787 pardon me, showed a failure rate of 25%, meaning one in four could fail to deploy in a real-life emergency. Mr. Barnett said he had alerted managers to his concerns, but no action had been taken. Boeing denied his assertions. However, <laughs> a 2017 review by the U.S. regulator, the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, did uphold some of Mr. Barnett's concerns. It established that the location of at least 53 nonconforming parts in the factory was unknown and that they were considered lost. Boeing was ordered to take remedial action. 
On the oxygen cylinders issue, the company said in 2017 it had identified some oxygen bottles received from the supplier that were not deploying properly, but it denied that any of them were actually fitted on aircraft. After well, retiring, that's the end of it. Why would you not trust these guys? Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, after retiring, he embarked on a long-running legal action against the company. He accused it of denigrating his character and hampering his career because of the issues he pointed out, charges rejected by Boeing. At the time of his death, Mr. Barnett had been in Charleston for legal interviews linked to that case. Last week, he gave a formal deposition in which he was questioned by Boeing's lawyers before being cross-examined by his own counsel. He had been due to undergo further questioning on Saturday. When he did not appear, inquiries were made at his hotel. He was subsequently found dead in his truck in the hotel car park. Speaking to the BBC, his lawyer described his death as tragic. Let's uh, yeah. see some video. This is from TMZ uh, of John Barnett talking about some of these same things. This is not a 737 problem. It's a Boeing problem. Um, and I know the FAA has gone in and they've done due diligence and inspections to assure that the door plugs of the 737 are, are installed properly and the fasteners are stored properly. But my concern is what's the rest of the airplane? What's the rest of the condition of the airplane? And the reason my concern for that is back in 2012, Boeing started removing inspection operations off their jobs. So it left the mechanics to buy off their own work. So what we're seeing with the door plug blowout is what I've seen with the rest of the airplane as far as jobs not being completed properly, inspection of steps being removed, um, issues being ignored. My concerns are with the 737 and the 787 because those programs have really embraced the theory that quality is overhead and non-value added. Um, so those two programs have really put a strong effort into removing quality from the process. When I first started working at Charleston, I was in charge with pushing back defects to our suppliers. And what that meant was I'd take a group of inspectors and actually go to the supplier and inspect their product before they sent it in. Well, I'd taken a team of four inspectors to Spirit Aerosystems to inspect the 41 section before they sent it to Charleston. And we found 300 defects. Some of them were significant that needed engineering um, intervention. Um, when I returned to Charleston, my senior manager told me that we had found too many defects and he was gonna take the next trip. So the next trip he went on, he took two of my inspectors and when they got back, they were given accolades for only finding 50 defects. So I pulled that inspector aside and I said, did Spirit really clean up their act that quick? That don't sound right. And she was mad. She said, no, said the two inspectors were given two hours to inspect the whole 41 section and they were kicked off the airplane. So that's John Bartnett's, according to the official story, self Deleted is that we're what we're all, we are supposed to say here. Uh, he deleted East himself. Yes. Berlin. Um, yeah, I don't know what theories we're allowed to espouse about this. I guess if we suspect Putin did, it will be okay, right? Well, uh, Putin's got his fingerprints all over this. Yeah, yeah, all over. Clearly. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Putin. Um, uh, no, this is no, the price of no. freedom, though. It's the, it's the price of freedom, right? It's the it's the it's the price of freedom. The literal price um, of freedom. The price of freedom are are planes dropping out of the sky, and and I will say again, I've been saying this since I and started. And people who blow the whistle on it dead in a pickup truck before they finish their. Yeah, no, there's nothing. There's nothing funny about that at all. That this guy who was in the middle of a crusade against this company about to testify. Right. bringing this case against Boeing. Yeah, no, that makes total sense that he would delete himself right before testifying. I I would not question that at all. That's this was clearly says. a safe and effective yeah. self-deletion. Yeah. And uh you're you're a cuckoo crazy pants if you think otherwise. Right. Exactly. Exactly. What more can you say? That's the literal price of freedom, folks. And, 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 and and once again, I've been saying this since I started on this. Dennis Muhlenberg, who was the CEO of Boeing, 
who knew that the Max was not safe and kept sending it up, and even after one crashed, blamed it vaguely on the foreign pilots who had been flying right. the, the plane. Right. Uh, strongly implied those, oh, those pilots, they, they're, they're not properly trained. Uh, that guy should be in prison for life. I don't believe in the death penalty, but, uh, but yes, that guy should be in prison for life. Uh, he, he's the mayor in jaws who knew there was a shark and told people to go in the water and, um, just walked away with a nice golden parachute, free man. Hundreds of people are dead because of him. So rest in peace, John Barnett, one of the many dissidents of the year, it looks like. Um, yes. Amongst yes. many others, we will have to say. Uh, but uh, we, 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 take... ha we have to remember him when, uh, when time comes to name our dissidents. Please clap. <laughs>